my passion I'm this is Elizabeth of ERW plans on Instagram that's ERW underscore plans uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I'm setting up my passion planner for 2019 uh, we have our lovely passion planner pro right here along with some of the things I'm going to be using to do the initial setup for the passion planner um, and we'll go through these one at a time as we do the setup Now, I love Passion Planner, but one of the things I've always found kind of annoying is the green ribbon. Um, I understand the story behind the green ribbon, and it's not actually terrible with the Passion Planner this year, but last year I had the rose gold and rose gold and neon green. Like, Angelia, I get it, I love you. But the rose gold and the, the, the bright green, the lime green, oh, no, no, no. So what I did this year is I'm just going to add, because like I said, this, this works pretty well with this ocean blue, which by the way, can I just say I love the ocean blue. I, this j just give me Bioshock vibes for days. Um, I have plans to later do this over maybe in gold or get like a gold like Rapture logo here. Cause I mean, Art Deco, water theme. I don't know who in Passion Planner plays Bioshock or is a video game nerd, but I love them, love them. So, and the point is the green goes pretty well with this ocean blue green color here but I also need more ribbons <laughs> I can never have too many ribbons so what I've done is I went to my local um, craft store which is um, two hands papery in Boulder Colorado and I got I actually took the binder with me or the binder hmm, the uh, planner with me and grabbed myself some different ribbons that went well with the color and what I'm going to do to start off with is to show you how I'm going to add these ribbons to my planner. Now this one, this purple one is really, really similar to the green one, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm a little concerned about the pink one not standing up because it's a little bit more flimsy. This might be my um, one that I use to just permanently bookmark something. Um, whereas like the purple one and the green one are a bit sturdier so I might use those as a um, marking the week that I'm on or if there's a particular page in here that I want to mark I'll use those the pink one I'll probably just keep like maybe on my level 10 life plan page or something like that so first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna get rid of the I shouldn't take it I'm gonna move the passion planner out of the way for a second we are gonna add a little pen loop here in a bit first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to glue my ribbons together um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to measure out I want to give about an inch of space here to glue into the planner itself and then I want to kind of have them about the same length as the green one so I'm going to go maybe to about a little bit longer than the green one because I can trim it up later Green one straight across, so we'll just go straight across with these as well. All right. Now, because the ribbon's frayed when I cut them, because these are actually my sticker cutting scissors, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably use that end that I just cut as my in the binder end. So, I'm gonna start by grabbing some all-purpose adhesive. Um, you can get this at any craft shop. Um, Two Hands Papery has this. You can also get it at like Joanne Fabrics or wherever you prefer. And I'm going to actually just glue my two ribbons together because putting them in individually, there is a reason that you might want to put them in individually. Um, for example, if you think that you're going to have them moving a lot, you're going to be using them one over, I don't know. There are reasons that you might want to put them in individually. I just don't have any of those. So. I'm going to glue them together to make applying them later much easier. I'm going to use my tweezers here. And as you can see, the glue will go right through that ribbon. Gives me a little bit of glue on the outside here. A little bit of glue on the back, but not terribly, a terrible amount. Like I said, the pink is a lot less um, sturdy than the purple one and I'm gonna give that like a little bit of time to kind of 
dry over here. I'm gonna put it right on top of my scissors so it doesn't touch my nice work area here. While I'm letting that get a little bit tackier than it currently is, I'm gonna put in my pen loop. Putting in the pen loop is mostly a matter of preference. Um, for most planners, you're gonna put it right back here, like on the where this back pocket is. Um, I'm really, really tempted actually to put it on the front page here. I don't want my scissors. Because I really like that back pocket and I don't want to disturb it. Now this one, I got this also at Two Hands Papery. There's a lot of different colors um, for these pen loops. Uh, Chelsea also sells her own branded ones if you're a Chelsea fan. So anyway, this is the pen loop. For most planners, you're gonna just kind of pop it right on the back, like here. I'm a little worried because the pocket seems a little flimsy and fragile, but we'll go with it. We lined it up real nice and neat. Ta-da, it's in the back. And now if you have a pen or that you need to carry with you, like you have your particular favorite pen or whatever, you can just kind of slide it in to the pen loop. This one's actually gonna be a bit too big. Pen loop installed. I like that the pen loop I picked was actually the same color, so. All right, this is nice and tacky now, so I can go ahead and add it to my planner. Um, as you can see, this is actually sewn in. There's like a little thin bit of weaving here, binding tape, if you can see, Just right here. And we're gonna try and stick this down there. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue to it. And when I'm adding the glue, I'm doing it in a really thin coat because I don't want this adhesive because this is some serious like epoxy le level adhesive here. And I don't want this to get all over my lovely brand new planner. But conversely, I don't want to use too little and then it doesn't stick. So we're gonna take this, open this up a bit so you get that space in the back. And we're gonna try and slide our ribbon down inside of it. Like so. And then I'm going to take this. You can see we've got a little bit of a spillage on the epoxy glue here. So I'm just gonna spread it, try to move it around a bit. Just because I don't want this to look, to mess up the aesthetic of the book. And we'll do it on the other side as well. And you can see I went a little glue crazy on the other bit and glued a little bit too much. We can just keep shoving that down into the book. There, much better. And then I'm going to set the wipe off the excess and I'm gonna push down from the top here. And now we have three ribbon bookmarks instead of two. Or sorry, one other. We now have three. So easy peasy. And I got the length mostly right. I'm actually really excited about that. They're a little bit longer, but I can deal with ever so slightly longer as opposed to too short. So that's the first part of setting up the planner. So now that the ribbon has had a bit of time to dry, we're going to move on to doing the interior front of the Passion Planner for this year. Now, um, I usually, as you saw in my um, compact 
Passion Planner 2019 video, I usually do an index and a key at the very beginning, but we're gonna do something a little bit different with the Pro because I just, I really like the Pro. You're gonna go on to hacking, as I like to call it, my Passion Planner. Um, I've used Passion Planner long enough that I already know how I will benefit from Passion Planner. I already know the story of the Passion Planner, all the good stuff. I really want this to be every page to have a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these first pages that explains how it works and how to use the planner into more functional pages. For the opening page for how I will benefit from my Passion Planner, I'm actually going to make that my Word of the Year and 20 before 2020 page. Um, I've already printed out my stickers, but I, in my last video on the compact, I kind of talked about T-squares and cutting things out, and so I wanted to give you a better idea of what I'm doing when I'm talking about those. So first things first, I've got my stickers here, and I'm going to start at the top with my Word of the Year sticker in place of the How I Will Benefit from the Passion Planner those two together will, should put me perfectly wet at this fresh start here, which is what I want. I do like to keep that. Um, it does look like I'm going to be a little bit wide because the opening page is a little bit narrow, but we can trim that down. So we will start with our 20 before 2020 sticker. And even when you're using an X-Acto knife, sometimes things don't cut exactly the way you'd like them to. And I did actually make a second page of this, so if there's a rip or anything, I always have extras. Now, as you can see, we've got a little bit of an issue with the sizing. So I'm going to just trim it up ever so slightly around this corner that got a little jacked. And then I'm going to take a little bit off over here. Because like I said, the first page of the Passion Planner is usually a good deal shorter than, and the last page as well, than other pages. So that looks like it will be a much better fit. However, let's start at the top here. I'm gonna line it up. And once again, this, this is me using my removable matte sticker paper. So, should I find that it is still a little, a little bit wide, I can just go ahead and trim a little bit more off of it. This does mean that the symmetry I was going for on this is going to be a little skewed. It's going to be a little, the 11 through 20 of my top 20 are going to be a little bit shorter. But we'll deal with that. It's fine. I could also reprint the sticker, but I'd rather just leave it like that for my top 20 or 20. And then we're going to put in my word of the year sticker. Once again, there's a good likelihood that this is going to be too big because of the different dimensions of that first page to all the other pages. But on my word of the year sticker, I've actually built in a little bit of a bounding box on this because I wasn't really sure. I wasn't sure where my 20 before 20, 20 sticker was going to go, but I knew where my word of the year sticker was going to go. So I kind of built in the shorter specs of it, so to speak. I'm just gonna trim up the edges where my X-Acto knife was getting a little dull there. And let's see if this will fit. And it's ever so slightly still too long, but I can probably tuck that in there. Just give this page a little bit of a yank. 
and kind of tuck it in a bit. And then I'm just gonna fold this over. As you can see, this one, you got this extra bit here. It makes that a little wider. All right. So we've got my 20 before 20, my word of the year spot, and then I can still use the fresh start at the bottom with my biggest goals, what motivates me, and my words of encouragement. On the next page, we have the welcome, story of the passion planner, etc. how to stay connected. As lovely as that is, I wanna change that as well. I'm going to actually make that into a birthday page for keeping track of birthdays because I have another plan, as you can see, for the big spread here. Now this is my writing board that I talked about in the last video that I got um, from Jet Pens. And as you can see here, I had done two versions of the sticker. This one got a little smudge when I was printing it so we had to reprint which makes me a little sad but whatever the um, writing board that I got from jet pens is a b5 size board so it's the exact size of the paper so I'm gonna just take out my pencil here and I'm just gonna trace around my board like so Now you'll get to see my X-Acto knife and straight edge in, or my T-square that I talked about in the last video, in motion. I'm going to line up my T-square. As you can see, it lines up flush. It's got a bit of a lip here. It'll line up flush to my mat here. So then I can just bring my paper down. Everything's flush and it'll keep, give me a nice straight edge. Nice straight edge, I don't have to worry about the ruler if I'm using a ruler moving. Now once again, because I know those first pages are a little off dimensions wise, I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut down ever so slightly. This is not something I would do for any other pages necessarily, but it's a good rule of thumb for when I'm cutting this. And then I'm gonna once again, just kind of, I'm gonna rotate it, line everything up nice and flush so that my line is straight and you can see nice and straight and I don't have to like really measure so much. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit because once again, these pages are a bit more narrow. Exacto knife to the rescue. Now I have a nice, plain blank piece of paper that I can use in my passion planner. So, back over to these pages here. I'm gonna pull my sticker off of my sticker paper. And I just have this nice, large, blank, easy to draw on paper. I'm gonna line it up. I showed you in, a previous, in the previous video how we do this line up here line it up in the seam. Push it flat, flush, and then we push it down. Once again, the first page is a bit shorter than the subsequent pages in a year. So we have this little hanging bit at the edge here. That looks like I got the length right. It's just the width that's a problem. Now I can do two things. I can get the scissors out or I can go back to the X-Acto knife and I'm choosing to go back to the X-Acto knife for this page. So once again, T-square lines everything up nice and straight. It's a little bit different with book pages. You gotta give it kind of two measurements there. Um, one thing, whenever you're using any type of knife, you should always cut away from yourself, not toward yourself. I'm a bit of a rebel. 
so I don't always follow the rules, but just so you know, best practices say do not do what I'm doing. Cut away from yourself, not toward yourself. And then I will we'll use the scissors to trim, trim up the corners a bit. So now we have this nice big blank piece over here. It's a big page, I should say. And you can see here the difference between the page we just trimmed and the page behind it, a little bit shorter. And I'm going to put my birthdays and anniversaries reminder on that. Now, usually I like to keep all my pages very, very organized when I'm setting up my planner and have all the pages that are related to each other together. However, as much as I'd love to have this move into my vision board that I'm putting on next, I want a two-page vision board. And I want to have as much real estate as possible. So my birthdays and anniversaries wheel just seems to be a better choice. Um, the sticker comes from EBGB stickers. Uh, I used this last year in my passion planner as well. Um, I think going forward, I'll probably end up drawing them in in years to come. But in the meantime, we have the sticker. I am a bit of a stickler for having things centered, which is another really nice feature of having this T-square available. I've got 25 inches, so that puts me at 12 and a half is right in the center. So I know my center's there. And then this particular page is 17 centimeters, give or take. So that's gonna put us about eight and a half. Line that up there. This is the center of my page. And then we'll just line this sticker right up in the center here. or as close to the center as possible. Now the question then becomes, as I erase my guidelines here, do I try to keep the months even or equal? And I think that's really a personal preference. Do you have, are there months that have more um, birthdays than others or anniversaries, that sort of thing? So. Now this page is gonna end up being my vision board page. Um, I did the title on the page twice, so. What I'm going to do here, that this is my messed up sticker sheet. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit and then I'm just gonna stick this right into my planner. Cause this is going to end up being covered up with all of my vision board goodies. Um, one of the other things I did want to put onto my vision board was my executive summary and my 2019 goals for my business. I had those printed out as well, and we're just going to add those to the planner at this point. And once again, it's the same basic principle of we grab our X-Acto knife, get 
get everything evened up over here with our T-square. So now we're gonna move on. Passion Planner roadmap, I'm gonna leave as is. I do my roadmap every year, so I'm just gonna have that stay the same. I like the fact that they give you a 2020 calendar in the Passion Planner with the dates on it. Um, the thing I don't like though is that I have a 2019 calendar over here at a glance, which I'm sure some people find very useful. But the space of infinite possibility doesn't give me enough planning space for using it as an actual future log. So what I've done is I've made an actual future log. Here, and we're gonna put that into my planner as well as a bright and colorful calendar to match it. So. So there we go. We have our future log and our calendar. So as an event comes up, I can just take it from here and put it onto one of my squares over here. So if I need to book an appointment in May of 2020, I can circle it there in a color and then mark it over here. Those are all of my front pages for my passion planner for 2019. Um, in just a moment, we will do, start doing the back pages. For the back pages, unlike last year where I drew in almost all of my designs, this year I've pre-printed about half of them. Um, some of them are stickers I designed, some of them are stickers that I bought from other shops. So we're doing a little bit less creativity, but it does mean, take, mean that I don't have to take as much time doing all of my designing this year. So. Um, my first set of pages, I'm doing my level 10 life goals. If you ask me what this is all about, honestly, I saw it on Pinterest and I started doing it two years ago, these like level 10 life goals. And what I've, how I do the life goals is I um, pick 10 topics and then I do one to 10 goals within each of the life goals and then as I achieve each one I get to color in a little circle to kind of help me focus on different areas of my life. I have different um, sections than are recommended by some of the websites um, or some of the books that you'll see about doing like a level 10 life goal. So first of all the stickers that I'm using for my level 10 life goals come from Chelsea Brown's shop. Um, I got the digital download specifically so that I could change the color scheme to fit the color scheme that I've been using for the last few years for the level 10 life goals. The 10 areas of my life that I wanna focus on this year are my business, my photography business, um, Elizabeth Williamsburg Photography, my mental health, my education and um, other career goals, finances, community, giving, friends and family, um, my relationship with my husband, creativity, uh, fun and recreation, writing, and health and fitness. Each of these um, I have represented by a different color. And then I have my wheel down here. Um, my basic 
what I'm basically going to do is have um, little dots on the outside of the wheel representing initially which section each of these is and then as I complete some a goal in a, one of the 10 sections of life, I can just kind of color that in here. And the goal is to have a fully colored in wheel by this time next year. So that's the level 10 life goals plan. Um, the next set of pages, I saw this idea a few different places about doing a year in photographs, like a picture a month. And I printed, ended up printing the the sheet for it twice. I like, this is a glossy paper that I got from Amazon. Um, and then this is some matte paper from Avery. Um, you can see that the glossy paper is a much more white color. Um, the color pops off of it better. But what's hard to see, unless you're like looking real close to it, is that it gets on my printer, it gets kind of grainy in any solid black areas. And that kind of bothered me. So um, instead of having it printed and um, just dealing with the grainy black, I reprinted it as um, on the matte paper. And then I'm just going to use the glossy um, paper as the header is what my plan is at the moment. Um, much like I did last time, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and measure because I like to have things even. Um, I'm going to measure out where the center of the page is. Um, the page is slightly less than 25 centimeters, so we're going to call it about 12 and a half is the center. Right there. And I'm not using my T-square for this because it's a book and the T-square doesn't work terribly well on books. In my experience, um, pages tend to shift a little bit, which is also why that's not a completely straight line. Ten, much like in math, where math, will, if you talk to any mathematical person, they'll tell you a line is two points. You have to have two points. And this is true also with like drawing. Um, Part of me is like, oh, how bothered am I going to be that this isn't white on the matte one versus the glossy one? But I think I'm going to be more bothered by the ink issues than I am with the off colorness. So I'm going to take my, and also I can draw or write in any additional information. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to line it up with that line that I just made for my half sticker here and hope yay that it lines up properly. I'm going to go on the other side and do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter that the stickers are, I'm going to fix it, but it doesn't really matter that the stickers are different um, widths because the important part is that the black line lines up. Do it this way. We end up with one continuous line with like a little crease in the center for where the book folds. And then I can put my January picture here, February is here, March, etc. Write a little bit about it. And I have I'm gonna use the glossy sticker for the header. If I wasn't using the glossy sticker, and I'm going to trim it up a little bit, um, I, the matte sticker would be just fine. Um, and if I wasn't using the glossy paper, I probably would just fold this in half and put it right in the center of the page. Um, as it stands, I don't find that the glossy paper folds particularly well. Not as well as the matte paper does. Um, I think in my, I have to look at the previous um, video. I think when I did my uh, compact passion planner this year, 
for my fitness journal. I did fold some glossy stickers, but in general, I would advise against if they're stiff and glossy, folding them. Um, you can also put them down here. What I'm going to do instead is just cut the stickers into two pieces. So I have one large sticker here. I'm going to divide it right about here. The next one's going to be my marketing calendar for the year. I actually got this marketing calendar from a um, class that I took on Creative Live um, for building a photography business. And I've always used this marketing calendar. It's usually like a little printout that would go into like a, a three ring binder or something. But for this year, I just printed it onto sticker paper. And then I'm just gonna sticker it right into my book. And then I can put my marketing goals and activities on each of the months. And then I think for future years, I'll actually just take this whole bit and expand it so that I have more room to write in the boxes. Um, also, um, I like to keep a lot of track of my business stuff in my planner. Um, I, if you watched my video on setting up and redating my 2018 classic to become a 2019 planner, you know I have a separate business planner just for my business this year. However, I do like to keep as much as possible together in one place. So. I'm going to try and keep my business stuff as well in this planner. Uh, one of the things I like the least about using the full spread sticker pages like this is that they can get very crinkly. Um, and in this case, this one is slightly too big, which is really annoying. I'm not sure how I kept getting some of these just ever so slightly off. But what we can do is we can just kind of cut it and make that work. So that's what we're going to have to do. Once again, this is why we use removable stickers. Because that will make my life a lot easier. Um, ideally, I would have liked to have realized it was slightly off beforehand. Um, one of the things that I found is like an eight, this, these should be um, seven by 10 inch pages if they're a traditional um, B5 size and the pages are ever so slightly not. I don't know if that's just my planner or if that's all of the passion planners for this year. We're just ever so slightly not the right size. Not sure. But definitely something that has bothered me since I did these stickers in advance. Anyway. And of course, the nice thing with print your own stickers is that if the sticker size is off for whatever reason, you can always go ahead and reprint them. But I put I prefer to just trim rather than resize and reprint, especially because this paper is not cheap. Yay! As you can see, it's almost fit. It's just ever so slightly off. And then if that raw edge bothers me, I can washi that. So there's my tracker for my um, customer funnel. Um, there's also a few pages where I wanted to just have the sticker as a header. So that's what we have on for this one for my social media followers tracking page. We're just going to have a header sticker, which does fit.
And I'm gonna leave that as two pages because I'm gonna draw um, on this one some Instagram follower trackers and then Facebook um, and Pinterest and Snapchat trackers over here. I used to use Tumblr a lot. Tumblr kind of died the other day, so we're not using that so much at this point anymore. All right. I like to keep everything kind of organized in the order of the level 10 life tracker that I had over here. Um, my mental health tracking is in my other planner this year, um, my health and fitness planner, so you won't see the mental or physical health. Um, but what you will see next is going to be my is getting my financial health in order and my financial health this year we did two trackers i did a financial peace tracker which that's based on the first four steps of dave ramsey's program if you're familiar with financial peace then or dave ramsey then you kind of know where i'm going with this and i to make this sticker i just found on etsy a sticker that was um, a shop that had a really cute um, mason jar kind of sticker to it and used that. And once again, I can always wash you. On the other side, this is a modified Chelsea Brown sticker. Um, I took her monthly financial tracker and turned it into an annual financial tracker. Um, and I will do, well, I'm gonna be doing a video to show you how I make my own stickers. I won't be showing you how to modify stickers. I'm pretty sure that if you see that video though and you know enough about Photoshop, you'll be able to figure out how to Photoshop one sticker into another. So even the Chelsea sticker is slightly too big for my planner, so I don't know if I got a weird one or what happened there, but once again, there's a very simple or very clear cut line of difference. between the planner and the sticker when you look at it from the back. And also you can just wash you over this too. If it's one of those things that's not gonna bother you so much, you can just use your washi tape and washi that into a nice little kind of bookmark for the page so you always will know which page that is. You know, I would usually say, oh, well, maybe my printer was being weird when it printed some of these stickers, but the stickers come from different sources and I'm fairly confident that Chelsea gets her sticker sizing right. So I think it's just my planners are slightly imperfect, but that's okay. We'll move on. So um, this one, I took the jar sticker from an Etsy shop and then did the rest of it in Photoshop. This one I took um, Chelsea stickers and did a little Photoshop magic on there to basically change things around so I have a year's worth of income tracking down here, my monthly bills, and then a running expense log over here. Hopefully I won't spend too much money. This year I'm supposed to have no spend weeks, so this shouldn't get too crazy, hopefully. And if not, I can probably just ditch drawer on some more expenses. So next on my goal is my community giving slash friends and family list for the next page. And that's where I'm gonna put my holiday card list. Now, had an, I'm kind of like over the whole cutting a paper thing. So I'm trying to see if this one's also going to be too large. And it is. So we'll trim that before we even get it off of the paper. How's that? A little bit more, which is fine because we'll even it up a bit. And this is why 
if you see me cutting here, why I um, tend to rely on my holiday card list. I was gonna put the gift tracker right next to the holiday card list, um, it's just kind of like a Christmas page, but I really would prefer to have my gift tracker with like lines. So I think, last year I drew boxes and that's where I was kind of going with this. I was gonna draw some presents, make it really pretty and cute, but mm, I think we still can do that. We can still make it a very cute little tracker. trim up on my states visited page here since once again I realize that all of these are going to be ever so slightly too big now After that, we have some other basic kind of entertainment related trackers that I'm going to put on here. I have my Movies to See tracker, which is another one that I hand drew last year. And this year I just was like, I'm going to do a sticker. Because hooray for stickers, you know. And just as a warning, if you're new to passion planners, Stickering, stickering can become quite the addiction. I would be very wary of getting into the sticker world because it is quite the habit. Like I said, I hand drew all of this stuff last year. This year I'm like, stickers, so many stickers. Oh my God, stickers, yay. In the same section as my places to go. I also wanted to put a restaurant tracker sticker. Here we go. This is one that I just it was a quick and dirty mock up that I made and printed out. So nothing terribly, terribly fancy here. And that's why this year I have this writing board that I mentioned in a previous video and that's made its debut in this one. Because especially now that I've put this on and I've got the ribbon in, I get a, like, kind of a bump there. I put the plastic writing board in there and that makes my life so much easier. All right, we're gonna move into books. Now when I did, I made this books to read sticker um, based on a sticker from another passion planner store. This is gonna be my books to read for the year. And then Chelsea came out with her reading list sticker. So I had to buy it. So I really liked this one. And what I decided was that this is gonna be my books to read list and this is gonna be my books read tracker so I can kind of color things in as I'm reading or as I read them. Like once I start reading a book, I can add the title to the shelf and when I finish, I can color it in with the month in which I finished it. Cause if you don't know, all of my months are color coded. So what I did is I just kind of trimmed out the word two on the books to read page. So hopefully it won't be terribly distracting for me for it to say books read. I should probably put that on this page over here just to kind of keep it in a natural flow of books to read it followed by books read. We'll smooth that down. It doesn't look terrible. I mean this isn't this isn't the Homer's enemy episode of The Simpsons where Frank Grimes cuts out the letters and it's just really choppy looking. This looks not terrible where I cut out the word to. And then this is my to read list. 
which once again I use Photoshop to make a few modifications. I won't show you how to do that in my sticker video. What I'll show you how to do is how to modify, how to make your own stickers and then you can figure out from there if you want to apply that general information to modifying someone else's stickers. I'm just that kind of crazy person that really wants things a certain way and if I don't have a sticker that fits I'll just used to be white out or washi tape now it's just going to Photoshop and fix it so okay reading list books to read books to read books read and then every year in November I do National Novel Writing Month or NaNoWriMo uh, this year will not be an exception to that um, so I have a NaNoWriMo sticker and I'm just getting really over the whole cutting things the hard way way of doing things so we're gonna get out the exacto knife and just trim this the normal people way Yes, I'm doing it right on top of my book. I really do trust my cutting mat that much. I love this cutting mat. Okay. And I'll do the bottom just to kind of even it up a bit. This one also came from an Etsy shop. I can't remember off the top of my head which Etsy shop this came from, but it did come from an Etsy shop. And I will put that in the video comment section what store all these stickers came from. Kind of went on a sticker buying binge or a PDF buying binge, I should say, to be more accurate earlier this year. If you do use the Avery sticker paper that I'm using, you'll notice that it's got, it kind of has these little triangly bits in the back. When I use this for my, um, Passion Planner last year, the, um, classic size, what I did was I would just peel off a, one of the tiny little triangular corners and then pop it down the rest of the way and peel it off as I went. That doesn't work out so well this year, so I'm not doing it that way. Because um, I would have to pre-cut the stickers, um, the whole entire sheet, down to the appropriate size, which would be, to my mind, kind of obnoxious, and I don't really want to do that. There's just ever so slightly, like less than a millimeter of paper there that I just it was driving me crazy and I couldn't deal. So we fixed that. And then finally, for my blank pages, I'm going to do a cleaning schedule. It's this cleaning schedule that I've done a couple years in a row now, and I'll do a separate video to show you how I kind of draw in some of these pages, or like how I put together the um, vision board, for example.
Um, we're setting up January, the first week of January, and the month of January. So anyway, things that we're using today, we're gonna use some of my homemade stickers. I've got some lovely Mark's Mast washi tape for January, and we're gonna be using a couple of different stickers from a couple different companies and it's we're gonna have fun with January so let me get me get all set up this is I mentioned it in a couple other videos the writing board from jet pens one of the many very cool things about it is that when you are starting off a new month like this and you get it's it can be kind of a challenge to write at the very beginning of the year or the very end of the year especially those back pages when you have like a pen loop sticking in there can kind of make it a bumpy writing surface this is a nice plastic that'll keep that from happening by the way this is an a5 an actual a5 piece of plastic so yeah this is what i use to make my stickers this year what's this hmm what's this not good double plus ungood this is seven by ten this is not seven by ten i'm just I'm not gonna mention it anymore, but anyway. So when I clip to hold my pages to page down to kind of give it more weight and keep it open, I'm actually not clipping to the cover because that can dent the cover, the leatherette. I'm clipping to my board. Just so we get that out there. But I'm not gonna start with um let's see here. Yeah. When I do my planner, I like to do top down for my stickers. So we will usually start with either a washi strip across the top or the labels for the month. Um, while I'm at this, I'm just gonna address this. I saw this pop up on the Passion Planner group the other day about the font. I love the new font. Um, best I can figure is that it's Advenir, or Advenir, that's my husband used to work. Advenir is a font, Advenir is a company. It's Advenir and it's one of my favorite fonts. I have a business, my fonts for my business are um, Tuesday Night Social and Brandon Grotesque. And Brandon Grotesque was picked because I wanted Avenir. And unfortunately, it's a really generic font. It comes with like everything nowadays. So it was kind of silly to pick something super common. So I ended up going with the um, Brandon Grotesque instead, which you'll see on some of my homemade stickers. But what I what's more to the point is that I really like the new font I like the new font much better than the old font good job passion planner you've made me very very happy so just getting together my stickers that I'm going to be using for this month. Um, as some of you know, I have a kind of synesthesia when it comes to colors and months. Um, months are represented in my mind by colors and as such, I try to keep everything very color coordinated, color coded. So, I, as much as I love Chelsea's kits, we ended up not using them for this. Um, what I do have, however, are some Ch Chelsea's Sarah colors. Um, generally speaking, January is somewhere in the sky blue color range to maybe like a turquoise. So, but what I really love is this washi tape here. And what I do, and I'll have another video I'm gonna make to kind of show you a better idea of how I plan my month, but what I like to do when I'm planning a month is I start with a prime color, primary color. In this case, um, January is blue. 
and then I find a washi tape that I like to go with it. In this case, it's this Aurora Borealis tape by Mark Mast, or Mark's Mast rather. And then I will scan my washi tape strip like that into Photoshop. I will use a color drop tool to pick out the primary colors from it. And then I will color check that actually against um, uh, Chelsea's color palette. So I can buy stickers that will maybe not match, but will coordinate very well with the color palette that I've chosen. So that's how we got this one. Um, her Sarah palette came the closest to color coordinating as you can see. So that's what we went with. Other times I've actually gone absolutely out of my damn mind and made my own color um, palette for the month. And that's not only just ridiculous, but incredibly expensive. So we're using um, her Sarah color palette with for the monthly box headers um, for the basic monthly kit. We have rose gold for the um, Holiday stickers, I'm going to also be using the Level 10 Life stickers, um, which I had done to match the colors that I picked when I did my Level 10 Life sticker. I bought the PDF from Chelsea, I threw my own colors in, in Photoshop, and then asked her very kindly to change the text and colors to match my choices. So she very kindly did that to keep that all very matchy matchy we also have rose gold payday stickers because i'm really i think the i said this in the other video this just screams bioshock to me it's art deco plus ocean oh my god it's like i don't know who it is it um passion planner that loves bioshock but i'm right there with you i'm in love with you too and um yeah so we're, we're doing a lot of rose gold stuff with this which is going to include monthly tabs in rose gold and then also from EBGV shop we're going to have these stickers that we're going to use um, for the entire year as well I'm not really sure how I'm using them quite yet I have this let's call it a tendency to buy stickers without really kind of thinking how am I going to use this sticker in reality and that makes life sad so <laughs> we have stickers we're gonna figure out how to use them um, this is my binder of stickers here that will also probably get pulled in at some point um, during this whole fun process I have a bunch of Erin um, Condren stickers that we're gonna be using it's it's gonna be fun we're gonna have something of a blast with all of this so only other thing I want to do is grab those Erin Condren stickers and then we can get started. I was using these last year for my um, classic. They were too small. My understanding is they're too big this year. So, yeah. I'm also very excited because I ordered some new Chelsea stickers when I, the point that I realized, oh, hey, I don't have New Year stickers. And they arrived today. Today, I got my new stickers. And that will be for my weeklies. So um, first thing we'll do is I'll get started with the monthly tabs. Um, if you watched my other video where I set up either the compact or the classic, you'll know how I do tabs, but I'll still, this is your first video, do a quick run through. I have these binder clips. Um, I got them from Two Hands Papery in Boulder. I understand you can get them other places, including Amazon. Um, what I'll do, my preferred method for um, putting these stickers on in my passion planner is to pull the page out, out like this, line this up like we did in the previous video with the um, T-square when we were using that, Keep, line up your edges. Then I'll peel the sticker, I'll pre-fold just to make sure I get everything like right along that crease. If you can see the crease there, we'll make sure we try to get that lined up in half. And then this makes it a lot easier for me to put the sticker on. Cause I know to stop when I hit the crease, I can make sure it's lined up with the lines at the top. And we'll go on like so.
Um, the other method that I have mentioned in the past, you can take your pencil. You should have a pencil if you're doing this. Um, you can go onto the month and color on your lines from there, put your tab on and then erase your lines. Um, that's how I used to do it, but I found that this method is much more friendly. Um, considerations, as you can see, there's a little bit of overlap between the tab and the month in focus and the month header. So you might want to consider putting your tab on after you have put on your stickers. Um, I like to tab my entire year at one time. Uh, also this year, Passion Planner did a really awesome thing. They put the tab marks right on there. So I just like to have my tab right kind of on the side of the page here where the month starts, but that's a personal preference. Um, if you wanted to do something where you were just using their tab marked space, there's this silhouette spatula. Chelsea stickers are generally considered to not be removable. However, if you use your spatula, you can sometimes peel them back up and then you can just cover them up like so. And then honestly, I wouldn't remove that again. So I'm just gonna leave that one there. All right, so now I'll just go through real quick and tab the rest of my months. And voila, tabs have been applied. One thing I did notice when applying my tabs is that Chelsea's guide, if you're using it, is slightly different than the actual printed guide. So if something like a little tiny bit of gray at the top won't bother you, use her guide if it will, then I would just keep using the Passion Planner tab guide. So there's that. Now that my month is all, or my year I should say, is all nice and tabbed, we can move on to actually stickering things. Um, first things first, I'm gonna get out my kit. And we've got my washi here. I wish my washi was bigger, it would take up the whole thing, would be so nice, but anyway. The nice thing about this kit is that it has these washi strips so that you can use to redate a planner. Um, if you want to put it up here for the purpose of redating or if you want to use these strips, I have totally used the kit strips in ways other than intended. Um, if you are on Chelsea's uh, Facebook group, you know that I'm sort of notorious for just not following the rules whatsoever. So I just, I can't help myself. The rules are meant to be broken. It's just a fact of life, you know? Anyway, if you don't believe rules are meant to be broken, you have no business being a friend of mine. That's all I gotta say. 
Anyway. Once again, stickers, not removable. That's where the spatula comes in. You can use that to get it right to that edge. So it's nice and flush. And then just pull down as you go. And voila. Um, now I had gotten the days of the week in the rose gold because I really like it and that also comes with the month in the rose gold. And I'm kind of torn about using the monthly little header that fits it or the big old January in the rose gold. Which I don't know. I'm very, very torn about that. We'll put that off. We can come back to that. Um, let's see. Back to our kit. I'm actually a bit surprised that I only have the kit and I didn't get any monthly headers separate from this, but apparently I didn't. Didn't do super amounts of planning the way I did last year when I was putting my it together. But that's okay. I'm kind of torn on whether I like these solid strips of the days of the week or not. Just, you know, if you care. And lovely color cover for this month's focus that matches. Isn't that gorgeous? It's already starting to look like a real month. It's so exciting. <sighs> My biggest problem are these boxes. I don't really like pink, but I really want to use the washi that I picked out for this month. So, and I don't have a lot of pro stickers at this point in my life, but what we can do is use the little covers, cover up our gray days, rather than painting, which was going to be my backup choice was to paint these in. Um, and I can show you on last year's how I painted it. Oops. These things happen. I can put the pink down and then I can grab this. And just and and with the washi, I actually can be a little bit sloppy with it because I have a slice tool and a slice tool makes all the difference in the world. So. I can put down my washi, grab my roller and my slice tool. line it up and then as I said before make sure always you have the green part pointing to the top because that indicates the not so sharp part and then you do three very light cuts grab your spatula tool and just peel it up you've got a nice clean edge and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the same on the other side Lined up with the black lines or the edge of the sticker. Your preference. Let me do one, two, three cuts. 
And there we go. Feeling a bit more January already. I'm gonna cover my monthly focus boxes with these. Last year I had the birthday headers and the monthly goal headers. This year I'm going a little bit simpler. Keeping the boxes blank. So I can make decisions kind of on the fly. I'm gonna straighten that guy up because that was gonna bother me. There we go. Cool. And then we'll do the same with the pink at the bottom. And then again, the same with the washi tape. like it's snowy trees. Hashtag justice for snowy trees. This washi tape. It does seem to bleed a little bit on it, but that's okay. No, I feel like I say that's a lot, that a lot. That's okay. Everything's fine. This is a planner. This is not life or death. Unless you make a ton of money on the planner, planner stickers, that kind of thing. This is really not that critical. Everything is fabulous. You don't need to worry about it. Seriously, people, chill the hell out. Now, interesting thing. Hmm. Um, when I was out shopping the other day for sticker paper, I came across this very cool glittery white washi. I'm kind of ex wondering if I should experiment with putting that at the top there. Um, last year I found a silver glittery um, washi that I really loved. It was the only of the Heidi Swappy that actually stuck to anything. Um, so it was kind of exciting and I loved it and I just didn't want to buy eight rolls of tape that I was never going to use just to get one of this pretty glitter tape. And then I found this one and I was like, ooh, that's exciting. So one of the things I like to do when I do my monthlies is sometimes I don't have a hard and fast how am I going to use this sort of idea in my head I just kind of have all these little little different pieces that come together when I'm planning I think I like it just over the pink it's a washi tape though so it comes up real easy so I can line it up mm. Let's see, and if we don't like it, we don't like it, and we move on with our lives. Um, because this is a bit of a thicker washi tape, I'm probably going to do an initial cut with the scissors, and then I can trim up with the slice tool. If that was enough without cutting paper. Still not enough. Dang, glitter washi, you are stubborn. Much better. 
I think I like it. I feel like it's very wintry. If I wasn't terrified of cutting the paper, and I'm absolutely terrified of cutting the paper, um, I'd probably just get out my X-Acto knife to do this, quite frankly. Guess this is some stubborn tape. Yeah, I like that. I think that's very pretty and it's not so pink because I hate when things, are, I don't like the color pink. I'm a weird girl like that. Not weird. No, we're gonna take that back. I'm not gonna say I'm weird. I'm gonna say I'm just not a fan of the color pink and we're gonna move on with our lives. Right, right, cool, perfect. All right. Go over here. Now I'm a little nervous because of Chelsea stickers can sometimes not play particularly nice with my washi, but we'll see how this works. I love glittery stuff in my planner. I just want to say that even if the glitter is like a total disaster and a mess and just obnoxious, I like it. Apologize, as I said in a few other videos, if my head is in the way, I am nearsighted, like ridiculously nearsighted, so I have to get my head like right in there. Here's another time where that writing board is going to come in handy. I need something a little bit stiffer. The pages are all kind of pushing down a bit and it's getting kind of obnoxious to try and cut on, so. much prettier. I feel like it's very snowy looking now. It goes with my snowy trees and Aurora Borealis theme here. So we're gonna go with that. Yay! Now I'm gonna go grab my next set of stickers, which is my holidays. I'm just gonna use my spatula here to make sure we get a good fit. There's my New Year's Day sticker. I'm just gonna ever so slightly make a change if it will let me. Voila. And then I'll add my Martin Luther King Day sticker. I was really disappointed that in one of the Passion Planner forums, someone had a freak out that Martin Luther King Day is on here, but Easter's not. Dude, government buildings are closed. Well, I mean, government offices are closed right now, but in general on Martin Luther King Day, I care about that. Government's not closed for Easter, so, you know, I'm a little less concerned about that. Um, let's see, we do have Chinese New Year on here, so I'd like to know when the Chinese New Year is. Let's find out. Cause I don't think it's marked on here. Ah, in February, so not something I have to worry about right now. Yes, perfect. All right. So we've got my holiday stickers on here. Now we can move on to other things. Um, 
I have my own business and I have my set up self set up to get paid twice a week so I try to keep things as for lack of a better word normal as possible and what I really should do is put on my day of the week stickers which I'm very much regretting not having the rose gold ones right now. I have ordered the rose gold ones because I have realized the error of my ways. But until then, we will use the ones that came in the kit. Which look sort of big to me. Huh. I wonder. All right, guys. We're going to go totally off script here because I'm looking at these pro covers and I'm like, mm, I wonder... Will my last year ones fit on here? My gold ones from last year. I'm very curious now. This could be a game changer, you guys. Like you don't even know. Oh my gosh, I don't even know why I'm whispering. I am so weird. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Oh, maybe I don't have any left, bummer. That would have been so awesome. So I did redate an entire passion planner. Bummer, bummer, bummer. I think these are the same size though. Which makes things real interesting. Let's find out. Aha! very old gold stickers. Let's find out. This could be game changing. Look at that. They're actually a tiny bit smaller than the pro ones. What? What's this madness? This is madness. Oh my gosh. Such madness. Anyway. Am I the only person excited by this? Maybe. I don't know me holy crap I get to use my classic numbers in my pro what this is madness these are definitely not uh, compact numbers I just did the compact numbers in my new plan in my compact planner for this year and they are not this big not at all I kind of feel bad for ordering an entire sheet of new numbers. Oh well, so it goes, am I right? Right, cool. So, let's do some numbers. I can put my payday sticker on, which is now slightly bigger. Ta-da! And I'm just going to go ahead and number the rest of my month now. So just hang out.
Okay, now we've got our date stickers on and you probably saw me struggle with a couple of those there. I think I'm gonna fix this 24, got a little jacked up while I was putting it down. Um, <laughs> Sometimes with the foil stickers, while you can get them removed like that, um, the generally bigger problem with them is that they don't kind of stay, or if you try to nudge them as you can with some stickers, then they just kind of have a mind of their own and they will not nudge, so. They also seem to be more on the flippy side because they're stiffer due to the foil, so. They're a bit more fiddly, but I like them. All right, so there's our January page. And then the next thing we're gonna do, after I get my other payday sticker on so I know when to expect my own business to direct deposit things from into my account. If we have the right size, that is, that's last year. This is this year. We're going to go ahead and put our level 10 life sticker on. I'm kind of of two minds on this one. Do I put it over here or do I actually cover up the projects here? And I think what I want to do is I want to check on sizing because I usually get the monthly planner pack that Chelsea does and it usually has a spot for a photo. Here's a pack of the photo paper. That could actually go right there. And they have project spots. So I think I'm gonna put this, there's other things I wanted to put there too. Ugh, so hard to decide. I think we'll go with where it's intended to go, which is right down here. There's that. And then I still have a spot over here for other stickers. And I was kind of actually kicking the idea of putting a winter bucket list down there. I have a bunch of, a bunch, I mean, tons of the Happy Planner Create 365 stickers. And that I've collected over years of doing bullet journaling. And sometimes those just happen to fit really nicely down there and there was a winter bucket list in my seasonal one that might work nicely there let's see here hmm I'm not gonna want the holiday stuff in there and that's most of it is Christmas related for the winter bucket list I think I think this looks like a job for the washi tape cover sticker Like so. And then I can decide at a later point what I want to put down there. If I want to do a project planner sticker, and I did get some project planner stickers to go with this color palette, or if I want to do something a little bit different with that. But overall, I think this is a good monthly setup. So now that we've got our January monthly setup, we can go to our first week of January. Uh, let's see, I was very, very excited about the 
new stickers that came out. I was also excited about the new pro size because allegedly the Erin Condren stickers will fit. So this is January's, let's see. Once again, we gotta measure, we're gonna always measure first. Let's see here. This sticker is a little under four centimeters, a little over 4.1. The space here is too big. What madness is this? 4.1 from the deep side to right there. So, hmm, the plot thickens. Well, as I've said before, we like to work top down when we're doing, um, when I'm doing a passion planner page. So we'll start at the top, work down, and we'll figure out if we can put these stickers in there in some other way. And I think I have a good idea for what I'm gonna do, yeah. First things first, I wanted to show you, I had originally planned on having all these blue colors because January's blue. Um, but then when I was using up the last of my classic stickers, I ended up doing a spread for this next week that looked like this. And I actually really like this spread. This spread made me like ridiculously happy. I mean, like no one should be as happy as I felt about, I, I felt I was about this spread. So I'm gonna try and basically do a recreation of that spread, going, um, like I said, from a top-down perspective on it. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is get out some washi and take care of the top of the page. And I actually do have some black washi that's thin that I have for my compact. Ta-da! So, we can line that right up there. Just do a little fun little washi line, because I like washi a lot. Now, I don't know if you noticed with the other um, planner page, the today's focus section I had actually covered up with some leftover stickers from the December kit and I didn't want to buy a December kit just to have day of the week cover or the things today's focus section cover-ups like that just seems silly to me so if you're watching the overall video on how I was setting up this planner, you may have noticed that on one of the pages, I had these little weird black boxes at the top. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But if you did, congratulations on you going, hey, why do you have those black boxes at the top that you didn't use? Well, that's because, my dear friend, that's going to be intended to, it was intended to go down here. So I think I'm actually going to just go straight into the gold and I'll leave that as I can put a thing I'm doing for that date on there. I also grabbed the, this kit here. I could do the snowy tree branches, but I think I want to save that for another day. So we'll just start stickering. I'll leave the today's focus to use another time. Now, if you're going to redate this to be a Monday start or something like that, this is the same method that you would use, the same kind of thing with the stickers. Um, or you're going to put a date over top in this little square here. I'm actually going back to those gold stickers because I think it looks really pretty like that. But obviously that's just a personal preference.
Now, I've got these, because my plan is to use these, what well, my plan was to put these on Sundays, because I don't really do much except for like football on some day, Sundays. Should, I think I should break these stickers up, which means it's time for the X-Acto knife. I'm so excited. I love my X-Acto knife. Me and my X-Acto knife go way back. We're friends. It's great. Even when it cuts me, I still love it regardless. Cool. All right, and I won't use my T-square because we have some lovely lines here. I think, let's take a look. I think the weekly affirmation sticker will fit right onto the this week's focus. Ooh, looks like it will. Hmm. I also wanted to keep that this week's focus. Let's see about down here. Ooh, I like that. Cool. All right. So. Exacto knife. Cut along on the lines since I got I measured it. Actually measured for once. It's exciting. I do. As I was saying previously, I absolutely cannot. It's beyond my abilities to um, follow directions. Looks pretty good, right? I think so. So with my very black and gold theme. And then last year I was writing in basically anytime I had to like do business work or boring mundane tasks. And then by the end of the year I was like, I don't like doing this, this isn't fun. So what I've started doing is sticking these on here. Because it's slightly too wide to go into those spots. I mean, it covers the entire time. I've been some focusing on this week. And then I'm just gonna go back in and cut the rest of these little suckers out. down a little bit. That's because I have something that goes in at 8 o'clock. I do like to keep my schedule for actually scheduling things. So I guess I could meet everything 8.30. I don't use the good things that happened this week section. I make that a currently sticker, which does break up the black with a bit of gold, which I like. Ta-da. There we go. Now Next, I'm gonna get my Erin Condren stickers out. I've got a few sets of these. These fit so nicely, I don't have to trim the edges. Let's see what I have to trim at the end here. Oh, look at that, oh snap. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at that. The Erin Condren sticker fits. What, what madness is this, this is madness. Such madness. O-M-G. O-M-G, O-M-G, O-M-G. I am way too excited about the Iron Condren sticker shading, at least, for, or at least on the long washi strips. Oh my gosh, what's this? This is crazy. This is so crazy. They could be a little bit wider, but holy cow, look at that. What? What? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Look at that, that's craziness. All right. Now I mentioned earlier I had these stickers here. I think I wanna just use the time intervals. I mean, I'm kinda liking the way this looks now. This is my to-do list section. And then I have this section over here. I think I'll save my kit. Let me see what I've got sticker-wise so we can start getting real crazy with stickers here. All right. So we've got a birthday sticker that will have to go on New Year's Day for my hubby. So let's see. I like to put my workouts and things like that on there, appointments and so on. Didn't change plans a little bit, I think. 
We've got our small stickers. Perfect. So we'll put a to-do sticker on my to-do list and call that good. To-do list. And then I've got my cardio sticker here. It's a regular yellow gold. We'll make it work. Now I've got my calendar set up with those things. I got these stickers from EBGB this year and I've been trying to decide do I put them on the weekly or the monthly page. They're little mason jars to help me save more money and if I could do them every day here but I feel like that's gonna start looking kind of for lack of a better word ridiculous whereas having them at least on the monthlies not as bad I think. I think that doesn't stand out too much against my aesthetic that I'm going for here. So I've got that on there now. And since it's a black and gold week, I can just fill in in gold pen my weekly stuff. This is a Uniball Signo, I like my favorites. So we'll have 